Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel. For today's review we're going to be taking a look at one of the biggest Hasbro releases for 2022, that being the Transformers Legacy HasLab Victory Saber. Now we've got a lot to talk about in today's review so I would definitely recommend to check out the chapter times down in the description box below and let's say go. So starting things off here we have Star Saber. The main reason why I think you guys probably backed this, I mean this was the biggest draw for me and he's sick. A really nicely done version of the character and to be honest I don't think this was one we were ever likely to to see in the official mainline and even if we had seen it in the mainline I don't think it would have turned out as good as this guy as he's really awesome maybe can only be beaten by the masterpiece which is saying something now as we jump into the details I'm certain you guys know for the most part what to expect so I'll just talk you through the things I like and maybe think could have been done a little better but the design in general looks awesome I mean from almost every single angle he just looks striking I mean even just standing there in a vanilla pose this thing has presence and the color scheme is wicked even the pieces of plastic like the blue and the the red they just pop they're not painted but they pop and the yellow looks great I love that but he does have a little wonky angle and that's mainly here at the top now this isn't the biggest deal in the world but considering I'm reviewing it I just have to mention it basically the way Saber's legs fold up for this kind of star Saber mode it does leave a little gappage here at the top I mean you can literally see through him which isn't the greatest especially for a Hazlab but honestly it's a minor qualm I think the head sculpt looks cool I mean this is literally the main character of Transformers Victory and to me at least always reminded me of kind of a blend of a Transformer and a gun them but overall really nicely done luckily the paint and kind of the gold pieces that we have here for the chest on star saber at least have turned out really nice can't say the same for victory leo but as we come around here to the back he's very thick and chunky barely any hollow spaces decent sculpt work as well just a really nicely done looking figure and we're going to talk through articulation probably the most articulated hasbro transformer of all time and to be honest i'd expect nothing less for star saber so here for the head it can look left to right not the full 360 and this is mainly because the helmet does encase saber's head which also has the brain master so the entire body is wriggling around in there if you rotate the full 360 you're definitely going to break something so the minute you feel the second you feel a bit of resistance just stop moving it but it's a decent range i mean yeah look left to right it can also hinge upwards but again considering how far you lift this up it's going to reveal the crest of Saber's head would have been nice if maybe there was kind of a gap filler here just to conceal that but it's not too bad we do get some very soft ratchet joints here at the shoulders maybe they could have been a little more clicky I mean this will have to hold the V-Lock cannon later on in victory Saber mode but for the most part they hold up okay we do get a hinge joint out to the sides which can bend I'd say roughly out to that far a rotation here at the bicep and a double jointed elbow now this is nice but considering how chunky these forearms are to be honest you're going to get max 95 out of that so not the greatest range but definitely not the worst and one of the biggest geek out moments of the engineering from i'd say the commander Jetfire would be where you open the hand and the actual five millimeter port recessed inside the palm and they've carried that over here for this guy and it is just so cool to see so as we open these fingers as you guys can see that port will shoot in there and i just thought that was really awesome very simple but very effective as you guys can probably tell i'm quite easy to please and we do also get some butterfly joints so these here can hinge forwards to actually have him holding the sword with both hands which i thought was a nice touch and something else they added which i had no idea why is a butterfly joint going backwards now you don't need this joint for transformation and i haven't used it for any poses myself but it's just something they added and he also has an intentional ab crunch i mean we've seen ab crunches in the past with mainline transformers like rec gar etc but they've all been for the transformation this is specifically just for articulation in bot mode so this can crunch forwards that far not to the greatest extent, but it's decent, definitely decent on a soft ratchet joint. We do get a nice rotation here out of the waist. As you would expect, all the skirt pieces can hinge out of the way of the hips. So some nice clicky ratchet joints going forward, so I'd say about 90. They can also go back, I'd say, to that far. So not the greatest range, but it's decent. Nice clicky joints going out there to 90, so that's really cool. Rotation out of the thigh. Clicky ratchet joints there out of the knees. And then finally, we also do get... a pretty all right ankle pivot i mean it could have been a little better but it gets the job done so overall for the most part very nicely articulated and detail and paint wise i just think this guy looks insane really nicely done probably only beaten by the masterpiece and that's saying something now as we jump into accessories specifically here for star saber we have to talk about the sword so here we have it as you guys can see sculpted really nicely they actually painted the back of this as well i wasn't expecting these pieces to be painted this will become the nose cone for saber when in jet mode so just bear that in mind but we do get some very nice silver here for the blade itself and you can switch it around there is a cross guard so at the moment i believe i have it in the animation accurate orientation you can wriggle it out 
and stow it in a way where it looks more toy accurate. To be honest, I really don't like the way this looks. I mean, it just kind of looks off-center to me, so I much prefer having it this way, although it is worth mentioning that you will have to really click this in, as if you don't. When you slide this into the palm, this piece does retract due to transformation. This is going to shoot up and will just pop the blade clean out, so there is a little force required. I do believe this is complete transparent plastic, which has been painted over, so definitely just be careful on how you're handling this when actually inserting it in. Try and push the pressure here at the base and not so much here at the top, but that's really cool. It can be pegged into the hand as you would expect. Like I said previously, you can actually hold it with two hands or alternatively, as a true samurai would, you can smack it here on the waist belt, which is nice. I do like that look. And there are various different ports here at the back as well. So if you wanted to, you could peg it here. I believe in the animation, he actually does draw it out of the back. So that is something you can do. But he also comes with a shield. Now, I do believe this was a tier unlock at one point. I mean, should it have been a tier unlock? I don't personally think so, but very nicely detailed. I love the white plastic, very thick. Not the type that has so far become victim to yellowing. So I'm hoping this holds up over time, but nice glossy blue strip. The paint maybe could have been a little crisper here on the corners, but detailing for the back looks nice. We do actually get this handle, which can rotate as well as actually be removed due to some of the configurations that we'll get into for jet mode. Now, much like the sword, you can have him holding this in a few different ways. So you can have it pegged into the hand or alternatively there are a few clips here which do allow you to actually clasp it over the top of this forearm guard so that's a pretty neat look or you can actually combine the two weapons so as you guys can see this will slide in peg into this port here in the top and again you can just clasp it over the top like that and then finally four star saber he also does come with this smaller blaster but to be honest i think this is more intended for the actual saber mode and this doesn't look anything special. I mean, it literally looks like a weapon that would come with your average Generations Deluxe. So maybe they could have painted it or just filled in some of the waffling. I mean, that doesn't look the greatest for a HasLab, but... Again, it is what it is. Now, jumping into a few comparisons. First of all, we have Star Saber compared alongside the Siege Commander Jetfire, the Kingdom Leader Ultra Magnus. So a little bigger when in comparison to your standard leader, but a little smaller when in comparison to a commander. So kind of in an intermediate, I'd say if this was to be released in the main line, it would definitely be a commander. I mean, it's way too big to be a leader, especially in terms of just how chunky it is. But there's that comparison. The Leader slash Voyager Earthrise Optimus Prime and your standard deluxe scale, that being Wheeljack. And finally, just as I'm about to jump into the transformation for Star Saber, here we have him alongside Victory Leo. So transformation, we're going to go from robot to base and then base to the V-Star. So to start things off, pop off the helmet. We can then take the face shield, hinge this up, and then the antennas will flip forwards, basically becoming tiny little guns for the base mode. And we can set this off to the side. Next thing you'll want to do is take these tiny little gray pieces and just kind of detach them from the legs of Saber. And then we're going to come around to the back, take this section here, bring this down and there is a tiny little button which will essentially eject Saber from the body. So we can just attach that and take this guy, set him here off to the side. Now turning this into the base mode, to be honest, it's actually quite simple. So to kickstart things off, you're gonna to wanna to take the hands and just collapse them into these hollow cavities. I mean, yes, there is a little bit of hollowness, but to be honest, I don't see a way around that considering that these have to just rotate in there due to the jet mode and everything, but push them in there and do the same here for this side. I then recommend bringing this forwards as we're gonna open this panel here out, compress this in, and then snap this section into place and then rotate that just like so. Do the exact same here for this side. So pop this piece open, bring that there to the back, and then just snap that in, rotate this here. We can then take these pieces, hinge these sections up on both sides, take the toes, detach those, this tiny piece will fold in, and then the bigger piece will also conceal within this cavity. Do the same here for this side. And then next up, basically all you're gonna to wanna to do is take the hips, hinge them out to the sides. This piece here will flip forwards just like that. We can set it down, take the helmet, and just snap that in there. And now comes probably one of the worst parts of the transformation. I'm just gonna be honest and say it doesn't work at all. And that's attaching the shield to these tiny little gray pieces. So as you guys can see, they are actually grooved. They're on a slight angle and they're supposed to tap into these slots. Absolutely not. I've tried in various different configurations. I've tried pushing these in closer, extending them out. This does just not lock in there at all. It's just a bad design. So essentially it literally does just rest there and as you guys can see it will just continuously pop out so i'm literally honestly just going to rest it there because it's way more hassle than it's worth trust me guys it just doesn't work at all so that is essentially the base mode to be honest i think it's a rather lackluster mode 
but it is something that you can do if you want. And then we'll set this here off to the side and now bring in Soba. So let's get into it. To kickstart things off, the legs here will detach away from the chest piece. And this is where I actually have a tiny little QC issue, or it could prove to be a big one. So split the legs here, extend this section out. Now for some reason, straight out of the box, this tab had a big nasty stress mark going through it. And I don't know why, because this doesn't tab into anything in any of the modes. It merely does just kind of slide into this tiny cutout just to keep its place here when in Star Saber mode. So to see such a big stress mark straight out of the box I think is absolutely terrible I mean especially for a Haslab I'm not entirely sure if that's going to break either I mean it is actually pretty badly stressed and another crazy thing is that on this side there are no stress marks at all so really bizarre but next up we're then going to want to take this panel hinge that out we can then take the thigh extend that snap this here into place take these fold them backwards the shins are going to pop up like that and then we can just fold out the feet exact same process here for this side so extend this section here out fold this panel up and over we can then fold out the toe flip up the knee pad this piece here will come to the back and then for some finishing touches hinge up the shoulders and then we simply do just pop out the fists on both sides and there we have Saber fully transformed up into his little kind of deluxe robot mode. And this is actually a pretty nicely done figure, especially considering that this does become the core of Star Saber. I thought that was really nicely done, especially for a figure which is quite small. As we just take a look at the details, the helmet looks great. I think the paintwork overall is really nicely done on this guy. Like I said, Star Saber has turned out super crisp and precise. And then as we flip around here to the back, as you guys can see, not too much kibble. Articulation is as follows. So like I mentioned previously, we don't get a full rotation out of the head. It does just look left to right. But hinge joints here for the shoulders, ball joints as well. We do get a nice hinge joint there at the elbow. Rotation at the bicep, although some pretty nasty hollow gaps here for the inside of the arms. Now I get why it's here because the fist transforms in that way. But Haslab, I mean, could have they packed in an additional panel? I absolutely think so. That does look a little cheap, I'm sorry to say. We do get a waist rotation, and much like Star Saber himself, an ab crunch, which isn't for any of the modes, is solely just here for bot mode. So that's really cool. A proper intentional ab crunch on a deluxe. This has got to be a first for Hasbro Transformers. We can then kick the hips forwards that far, back to that far, rotation out of the thigh, 90 there at the knee, and we do get a tiny bit of pivot here out of the ankle, but to be honest, it's pretty much barely existing. And just to finish this guy's look off, we can then take the blade, detach it, take this section here, shoot this up, and of course, attach that there onto the top of the shoulder, which actually looks pretty cool, just completes his look. And we can also bring in this blaster, which I said previously, I personally think is better to scale with this guy just so you guys can see how that looks. And for a few comparisons, we have him alongside the Netflix Deluxe Class Bumblebee, and again, your standard Deluxe scale, Wheeljack. So let's get into the jet transformation for this guy. Another transformation. This is pack load of engineering, but to kickstart things off, you're gonna wanna take the fists and just compress them into them nasty looking hollow cavities. We can then take the chest piece, fold this down, and it actually will reveal the Brain Master. So like I said previously, there is an entire body actually wriggling around in this chest unit when you're moving the head even when in the star saber configuration so just bear that in mind but this is removable so we can just gently pull him out i do believe that he attaches via this transparent piece i mean clear plastic not too sure that was a good idea i guess only time will tell but to transform him we flip this piece up and there we have the brain master this thing is tiny i'm not entirely sure my camera is going to be able to pick up the detail but very nicely sculpted and painted i mean check out the gold that we have on the chest piece and it's considerably smaller than your average headmaster I'll be sure to include a comparison shot around about now, but very impressive detail and he can articulate via two ball joints here at the shoulders and a tiny pin which goes through the top of the hip. So let's just set him here off to the side. You'll then want to take the helmet, fold this into the chest. This piece will then come up and over. We can now take the feet, snap them there into place and then take these pieces here, angle them down. These pieces will just come out just so we can see what's going on. And then what we can do is shift this up snap that back in and do the same here for this side just making sure that everything is correctly aligned we can then snap these into place snap these pieces back down so click all that in fold out these pieces here and then the arms are going to slide down just like this on both sides 
and then we can take the wings, fold these out, and much like the actual hilt of the sword, I like how the paint continues not only from the front, but here to the back. That is really cool, exactly what I would expect from a HasLab as well. And then we're just gonna fold these pieces up, again, painted front to back, which is really nice. We can now take this piece, flip up the cockpit, snap this here in there, and then for some finishing touches, take our tiny little Brain Master, fold the legs and arms forwards, place him in the cockpit, and there we have Saber in his jet mode. Now this actually looks really awesome. I mean, check out how detailed and nicely this thing comes together, especially considering that he's quite a small deluxe scale transformer. I really like this. I think the colors just pop. Much like I said in the actual Star Saber mode, I think the plastic looks so cool. Amazing detailing here for the front. Paint apps have all turned out pretty crisp and precise. Now, transformation from base mode into the V-Star. If it hasn't done already, you're gonna to wanna to remove the shield and just set it off to the side. Take the helmet, detach that as well. And now is where things get a little funky. So basically, you're gonna to wanna to snap here in the middle of the thigh. So just attach that, hinge it down. And if you want storage for the actual blade itself, I'd recommend bringing it now. So it does just slide into this cavity, completely clears when the arms peg in as well. So I thought that was pretty nicely engineered. And then we take these arms here. There is a tab that's going to slide there into that slot. So let's just snap that in there. We're then going to open these panels up and this is going to compress inwards and we'll snap into place. You can then take that panel, snap that in there, rinse and repeat the same here for this side. So snap this section in there without popping out the other side hopefully we can then take this hinge that out bring this piece here in give that there a good old click very nice chunky plastic it's good to actually have a proper thick feeling transformer for a change we can then flip up now to the top take these pieces and just fold those out. We can then take this panel, hinge this to the back, and there we have the V-Star completely naked. So to actually armor it up, you're gonna wanna take the helmet, snap that in there. We can now take Saber, fold these wing pieces down, take these sections and hinge them up. And then these gray pieces will flip forwards and essentially these tabs here and here are gonna lock into these slots on either side. I'd be cautious of perhaps applying too much pressure. You definitely don't want to scratch up any of that gold paint. I do think there's enough clearance. I mean, I've transformed this many times and haven't encountered any issues at all. So just give this here a nice old squeeze. We can then bring those panels up and over and then just straighten everything out. The shield here will peg into the back and we can take this tiny little blaster snap that there into place and for some finishing touches we do get some landing gear so flip these pieces out and there we have the v-star actually looks pretty sick i mean for a spaceship i really like the way this looks and the engineering on this guy is just nuts there is so much that has gone into this figure and very nicely detailed as you guys can see the cockpit looks great very accurate in the animation i'll be sure to insert a few clips and images from transformers victory for reference but really like the way this thing looks overall Pretty nicely done. So I believe that just about wraps up everything to do here with Star Saber. Let's jump into Victory Leo. So Victory Leo, what do I think of him? Well, he's definitely turned out a lot better than I was expecting, especially going by some of those promotional images and CGI renders that they were putting out around about the time this thing was needed to be backed. But is it great? Absolutely not. Personally, I think it's the weakest part about the set and I'll go into some of my reasons right now. And it's mainly got to do with quality control. So sadly, straight out of the packaging, this side was scuffed so so badly. I mean, for a HasLab, what on earth is going on? That is poor. I think the paint apps here for the chest, I mean, they could have been a little better, but one thing which I am just so hacked off about, and it's actually not a quality control issue, it's a design issue, would be this head crest. As you guys can see, the black paint has scratched clean off, and it's because when you transform this into the Lion or the Jet mode, this panel has to come down and cover the face, and at one point, it will actually come into some resistance, and that's where you need to snap it into place, and it is literally snapping over for a section which is painted in black. What on earth? Why this piece, that middle piece, wasn't cast in black plastic is just completely beyond me as 
I'm going to be honest, guys, in bot mode, I know it's probably nitpicky to many of you, but I just think that is so damn ugly, and it's a paint scratch, which is inevitable. I mean, if you want to transform this, there really is no way around it, and I do not like the waffling and the hollowness that we have here for the V-Lock rifles. These look so bad, and considering that here in Victory Leo mode, you're going to have them facing forwards, I just think it is a massive turnoff, but those are some of my biggest gripes with this figure. Other than that, I mean, it looks nice. I do like how the Autobot logo kind of comes together if you give it a good old squeeze, and the detailing on this figure is pretty decent. Very chunky. He does feel quite thick, despite him having quite a few obvious hollow spots here for the thighs. I mean, this is a Haslab. Why are they cutting corners? They're literally charging what they want for this, and still they're cutting corners, but... As we take a look here at the front, I think the detailing on that looks pretty nice. Coming around here to the back, it looks decent. He is missing some red paint apps, which I believe were originally shown on the prototype around about here. The way they've got around this is basically packing in a few red stickers, which I am not going to apply. As you guys know, I absolutely hate stickers. All of those Transformers primary issues, I didn't want to apply them at all. So I'm not going to be taking any chances with this guy. I guess it's their way around giving us exactly what they advertised. I mean, they don't want a whole fiasco like we saw when Unicron was revealed to not have the painted more, but... I guess they included it. Decent detailing here for the back and articulation wise he does have a swivel here at the head. We do get some decent rotation out of the shoulders, hinge out to the sides, nice rotation there, hinge joint, wrist rotation, nothing at the waist due to the way he transforms. I mean he literally splits right down the middle so I wouldn't expect that anyhow but we do get some nice clicky joints going forwards, backwards. Now the range of motion going out to the side on this part of the leg is fine. As you guys can see, it moves fine. But on this side, as soon as you move it out, it disengages the transformation joint. Again, not the biggest issue in the world, but as you can see, there clearly is a few discrepancies between the joints. Maybe should have been double checked before they actually hit the go button on this guy. Can kick out to about that far rotation at the thigh, 90 degree bends there out the knee, and a tiny bit of pivot just in the toe, not the main foot itself. But it's decent. Now, accessories, in addition to the V-Lock rifles, which we have here, I mean, you can bring them forwards if you wanted to, and you can also remove them and actually attach them onto some of the ports that we have on the side of the arms. We also do get the V-Lock cannon, which was a tier unlock, and I think it was probably one of the best tier unlocks we got. This thing looks sick, especially when we get into the Victory Saber mode. I love the way it looks. Sculpted beautifully. Not much paint. I believe it's just this red strip, but Looks decent, we have a few attachments, so we actually have a peg where you can insert it in the hands, or alternatively, you can flip it around to reveal this clip and actually attach it onto what I want to say would be machine guns here on the side of the hips, so it does just snap in there, and again, if you wanted these pegged into the arms, it creates for a really cool look, and some accessories which I think are designed for this guy in particular would be these two blast effects. Now, I also think these two were a part of a tier unlock, and I'm not too sure why, because these are just a recolor of the ones we got from Siege Jetfire. Completely done in green, you can attach them onto any of the weapons, the V-Lock rifle or the V-Lock cannon, and I won't lie, it creates for a pretty decent look. Running through a few rapid comparisons for Victory Leo, we have him compared alongside Earthrise leader Optimus Prime, Deluxe Class Wheeljack, Netflix Bumblebee, which looks so tiny through the camera, and then finally Kingdom Leader Ultra Magnus. And as you guys can see, he's pretty big, probably would classify as your average generation's leader. Now, getting down to transformation for this guy, sadly we have to do that cringeworthy step where we're literally scratching off part of the head, but you're going to want to take this panel here, fold this down, oh, I hate that so much. We can then flip these tusks forwards and the mouth will open very slightly. What we can now do is take the fists. I personally would recommend rotating them this way. Honestly, it doesn't really matter, but this is the way I like to do it. And then just flip these pieces around. Do the same here for this side. So flip that around. And you can kind of already see where a few things are going. Pop open the head just to fold out these side pieces of the main. And then flip your attention around here to the back. Take these panels, pop them open. Hinge these pieces down. And these tabs are going to slide into those slots. So snap that in there do the exact same here for the opposite side we can then fold out what they're calling his tail and to be honest i think it's a pretty pathetic excuse of a lion tail but we'll get into that in just a second combine the two halves take the toes fold them up if they haven't done so already we're then going to want to take this back panel here which can be a little difficult to actually get out but fold this section down and then for some finishing touches take these sections here Fold all of this down, do the same here for the opposite side, and then we basically have him in the lion mode, although you can actually attach the V-Lock cannon to this, so 
let's just slide this here over the top and there we have victory leo fully transformed up into his lion mode and I think it's probably his weakest mode, to be honest, along with the jet mode. I don't think this guy looks great, particularly in any mode, besides being essentially a combiner piece for Star Saber. He really does feel like the afterthought of this set overall. I mean, the bot mode was decent, but everything else, I'm going to be honest, guys, and say it does just fall slightly short. So... Here for the head, we get a decent sculpt. I mean, personally, it's nowhere near as ferocious as he was way back in Transformers Victory. I think they could have maybe gone a little bit more violent with that head sculpt. But, I mean, decent detailing overall. As we take a look at it here from the side, considering what this thing has to do later on for the combining gimmick, I think it's turned out okay. But that towel is just horrific. I mean, it literally has a massive hollow gap through it. These will actually become kind of the clasps for combined mode with Victory Saber. But... That is him here in Lion Mode. The V-Lock Cannon doesn't really stay in there all that well either. It is an incredibly loose grip and not to mention quite tedious to get in there. I mean, if you rattle this thing around just a little bit, nine times out of ten, it's just going to dislodge. So I'd recommend setting that there off to the side. And articulation, the head can kind of tilt left to right and rotate. And we get all of the same range out of the arms as we saw in Bot Mode. And these legs here can go forwards and backwards, bend here at the knee and a tiny little bit of pivot here for the toe. Now for transformation into his jet mode. We're so close to actually getting this now into the victory saber mode, but to kickstart things off, you're gonna wanna take his head and essentially just close the jaw and collapse this upwards like so. We can then take these guns, rotate these around to be fair, I should have actually done that first, but just fold all that up like this. We can now take these wings, hinge them out to the sides, and then basically the forearm is going to collapse alongside the shoulder and there is a tiny tap here on the back of the elbow which is actually going to slide into this slot here on the wing just to further solidify it. So I thought that was a pretty neat engineering trick. Do the same here for this side. So just snap that in there. We can then split this as you're actually going to want to fold away that ridiculous tail. So get that back in there. Snap these pieces in and then just combine the legs up. Rotate them up like this. Do the same here for this side. And to make him look a little more aerodynamic, I guess you could also take these pieces here, fold them up like so. And then for some finishing touches, trust me, we're basically near enough done. Bring back in the V-Lock Cannon and it will attach in two places. So there's a tab here and a tab here that will slide into the slot at the top and then this slot here. So just line that up like so. And there we have Victory Leo in his jet mode. And without the V-Lock Cannon, this thing doesn't look aerodynamic at all. And to be honest, barely looks okay from this angle. So suffice to say, one of the weaker modes, I think, personally, I mean, it's okay. It vaguely resembles what we saw from the animation, and it gets the job done. Like I said, this thing has a lot to go through later on when we actually merge it with the V-Star. And of course, with Victory Saber himself. Now, the time has finally come to actually begin to combine the two into kind of this mega spaceship thing. So to kickstart things off, off. basically to prep this guy you're going to want to take the v-lock cannon just attach that there like so we can then take these cannons here hinge them up to the top bring the head forwards as what will happen is this is actually going to slide over the top just to allow for a bit of clearance for the shield storage and that is basically this piece done we can then come here to the v-star detach the shield now this piece for this configuration is specifically going to want to be pegged into this base port here we can set that there off to the side take this section here pull this forward and I'm certain you guys all kind of know how this is going to work basically there are two slots on either side that these tabs here are going to slide into so basically we just take him slide these sections here through and they will click very securely into place but then next up we're going to take this and there are some slots here and some tabs on the underside of this they're actually going to peg into that so that will create for a very nice satisfying click. Just make sure these wings are nice and straightened out. We can then take the shield. And what will happen here is I think this is supposed to be that way. This will clasp over the top. And then this here will snap into place. We can then take the V-Lock Cannon, flip that piece out, snap that in there. And there we have both of them fully combined here in this mega spaceship mode and it looks really cool i mean i do love the way this thing looks it does look pretty nuts but this is quite a hefty and weighty piece and none of my display bases would be able to hold this up in the collection well that's where another tier lot comes in and it is of course the transformers victory display base now this thing is actually pretty nicely done i do like the yellow paint that we have the victory slap bang here that looks nice the autobot logo and it can be configured in a few different ways depending on whether or not you have them in the robot combined form or the jet combined mode but here for the actual ship mode basically we also get this additional adapter which is going to slide over the top and this will clasp 
this piece here of Star Saber. So this section here, basically his crotch. And there's a tiny little slot there as well that will also peg into a tab. So just align this up like so. And here we have it on the display base. Now it does hold there pretty nicely. I personally wouldn't recommend to move it around too much. I mean, it is literally just a friction clip at the end of the day. So don't go rattling it around or this thing will fall off. And in terms of display, it looks nice. Very well balanced as well. I don't feel as if though the display base is going to topple forwards. And despite it being clear plastic, it definitely feels like it can hold up the weight. So that is a display option that you guys can do if you wish to do. So what's going to happen now is I'm going to get these guys transformed back into their regular Star Saber and Victory Leo robot modes and then we'll actually transform them and combine them into Victory Saber. Let's say go as this is the mode that I know many of you guys myself included have been so excited to finally see and poor old Victory Leo here literally gets Revenge of the Fallen jet fired. He gets torn into so many different pieces. So to kickstart things off you're going to want to once again take this dreaded panel add further insult to injury and snap it over that painted piece of black plastic. We can then actually detach this here from the head for now and then here for the hand these are going to rotate upwards much like lion mode fold in like that do the same here for this side so just fold all that out we can then take the wings hinge these sections here like so fold these up and as you guys would expect again this tab on the back of the elbow is going to slide into that slot so just click that in there come around to this side and do the exact same snap that in and now we're going to slide these yellow pieces off of this black body so just hinge this off set this off to the side for now we can then take the head rotate this around the tusks too are also going to fold in and we can just collapse that like so you'll then want to rotate here these sections detach them and just angle these up as they're going to peg into a half a slot here on the back of Star Saber. And something worth mentioning, which you may or may not have already seen, is that this is 5mm port compatible, meaning that if you have any figures with a port smack bang here in the back, you can peg it in. So there we have Earthrise Optimus Prime with these wings, and he looks so cool. Kind of giving me Jetwing Optimus Prime vibes, but we're not going to talk about the Bay movies here in this review, as I'm sure you guys all hate it when I gush about them. But come around here to the back, and this section is going to peg into this slot. And another thing is you're also going to want to make sure that this piece here is down. So snap this here in. It will click in very securely. We can then take this section and it will tab into that piece. And like I mentioned previously, these cannons now will peg into a brand new slot. We can also hinge those upwards as well, which is kind of cool. I've attached this on first of all, as he's about to get very tall. Now we bring in the rest of the body and you basically 2007 jazz him into two pieces so literally snap him clean in half we can then take the toes fold those up come around here to the back and just collapse all of this here in upon itself snap that into that tab here and then you're going to specifically bend at this transformation joint and not at the hip joint so this will bend make sure that's straightened out and then this tab is going to peg into that slot so just snap that section there into place why are you not going in just like so what we can then do is flip this toe here forwards and then take these pieces flip those forwards these are actually the connectors that are going to peg into the soles of star saber and rinse and repeat the same here for this side although it is slightly different so as we flip this up the only difference is, is that you're going to want to take this connector joint which holds the two halves together and just compress that in like so we can then collapse all of this here in upon itself as you would expect we can then fold this here up and snap that in there flip out these connector pieces and they are good to go so the finishing touches truly are just done here to star saber fold the toes in on both sides and you're going to want to make sure that the toes are kind of angled outwards and then that is how you'll kind of determine whether or not it's on the right foot so basically latch this section here into place and then this piece here will latch over the top of kind of the smaller piece of the foot and then do the same here for this side so just snap that in there latch that there into place and there we basically have victory saber fully assembled fully combined and looking magnificent i mean this is truly an awesome figure it looks fantastic here in this mode and it's no doubt the mode that i'll be keeping this on the shelf it just has again so much shelf presence combined with the already amazing visuals that we got from star saber now he actually has kind of the mass and the height to further amplify him and i really do think he looks cool now we can add a whole ton of weapons so my personal favorite would be the v-lock cannon the only difference this time is that you're going to want to take this section here 
bring this around as there are two tiny little notches that are also going to slide into some grooves here basically on the elbow joint and then this piece will just go through the mechtech port as standard so snap that there into place just to further solidify that I think that looks pretty cool so there we have the v-lock cannon we can then take the sword you can either peg it into the hand or of course slide it here onto the side or should i say connect it onto the side of the hip skirt and then the shield i personally recommend to tab it into the hand as i think that looks so killer and that there is basically the complete star saber package not really too sure on what to do with this and you can also add the v-lock cannon to the butt which personally i don't think is the greatest look especially as far as weapon storage goes and i won't bore you guys with the ins and outs of the articulation as it is basically identical to what we got with star saber when he was just in his regular old robot mode so really nicely done we can also smack some of those blast effects into those v-lock rifles at the top and he looks nuts. Let's go through a few comparisons. So here we have him fully combined alongside the Commander Siege Jetfire. Finally, a worthy opponent. MP44 Optimus Prime, Earthrise Leader Class Optimus Prime, and finally Deluxe Class Wheeljack and Bumblebee. And it's truly here that you can appreciate how massive Victory Saber is in his combined form. But we're not done just yet. Here we have the display base, and you can actually attach this guy fully assembled onto this, which I thought was kind of cool. So basically, you're going to want to take this section here and just attach it. This is the cradle that we use specifically for the jet mode. We can then take this piece, detach it, and then it's now going to rotate around just like so to expose this big peg. And this is just going to shoot into the butt of Victory Saber. So we can just snap him into that. And there we have him on the display base. And again, it looks awesome. I really like how they added literally a millimeter of clearance between where the feet are and the actual Victory logo so that it doesn't scratch the paint. That was a really nice touch. Of course, depending on how you angle the knees, etc., the feet may come in contact with the base. I'd recommend just completely avoiding that. The base looks really nice. You definitely don't want to scratch up any of that paint. But a really nice display base to accompany a very impressive looking figure. But we're not done just yet. I bet you guys thought I forgot. But here we have the included MicroMaster and I'm going to be honest and say I think these also were a tier unlock what a complete waste of a tier unlock I think had they not even included them in this package I would have completely forgot about them as they're really pointless and correct me if I'm wrong but I do think they are just redecos of pre-existing micro masters that we got way back in the siege or authorized toy line so kind of a waste in my opinion but just very quickly going over the detail they are quite nicely painted I mean I won't deny that nice chest nice head that looks cool and then here we have this guy done in nice white plastic here's hoping he doesn't yellow decent detail now we'll very quickly go through transformation one thing which is worth mentioning is that the ball joints don't stay on for nothing even on this guy they are very loose can easily pop off even more so than when they were originally released so that's unfortunate but we're just going to want to fold all of this here up do the same here for this side again they pop off because they are a pain in the butt just snap these side panels in take the front of the car and here we have him in his police car mode i think that's what this is supposed to be and I'm doing a terrible job in transforming something so simplistic. I thought I'd just cut it to save you guys the misery, but here we have him fully transformed up. Nice detail, the paint is actually very crisp on this guy, even crisper than Victory Leo, shots fired. But this looks decent, and then we come to this guy, very tedious to transform. These pieces are gonna fold up, and I think he's actually quite easy to be fair, so this is gonna fold up like so, trying to make it so that these ball joints don't pop off. Combine the two halves and then these here shift upwards. I don't even think they really lock into anything They just kind of shift like that and then we take this and this piece here pops out Snap this here Into place and what's he supposed to be I guess some kind of search and rescue vehicle maybe a fire truck of some sort But again, okay sculpt work definitely not the highlight out of the package in my opinion but they are included. So wrapping up on this review for the HasLab Transformers Legacy Victory Saber. My, 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 what a whopper of a video. I mean, this thing was just so difficult to compile. So please forgive me guys if there are a few wonky camera angles. I've tried my best to encapture the awesomeness that this guy has as much as possible, but it's a really nicely done figure. I think at the time of backing this retailed, at least here in the UK for, I want to say 170 or 180. I think it's 
worth it. I mean, to be fair, you get a lot with this guy. You basically get Star Saber, which in itself, I think they maybe could have released as its own individual commander. And then you also get Victory Leo. Now, granted, I have many issues with Victory Leo from the quality control of the paint apps and some design flaws with that kind of flip out panel from the head and the hollow nature of the V-Lock rifles, etc. Star Saber is actually really nicely done. I can't fault him that much. I think in terms of bot mode, he looks fantastic. And the articulation is next level for a Hasbro Transformer. Really impressive. He does come with a great array of accessories. I mean, there's nothing missing here that massively stands out. He comes with the sword, the V-Lock cannon, those big rifles, blast effects, Micro Masters for better or for worse, and the display base, of course, and probably a few other ones that I'm actually forgetting. I think transformation is very intricate. I mean, converting this guy, sometimes I felt like I was handling a masterpiece. He definitely is quite intricate and involved. I think the plastic quality is great. Nothing feels particularly fragile besides those pieces of the chest, which become the legs of Saber, which are showing some stress marks. That's quite strange, but the Brain Master's nice. I just think it's a very nicely done figure. In terms of a HasLab, though, should we expect better? I definitely think in the quality control department, I mean, they should definitely tighten up the pain apps and the hollowness. I think waffling and hollowness on HasLab releases should just be completely abolished. I mean, literally, Hasbro set the price for these, so they can charge whatever they want, and if they're doing that, then they should literally be giving us the best, the creme de la creme of Transformers, and when I see hollowness, sadly, I think I'm just dealing with a mainline figure, but luckily, it's mainly just to do with the accessories and Victory Leo. I'd love to hear your thoughts down in the comment section below. What do you think of this guy? Is it one that you've backed, or if you haven't backed it, do you regret it? And be sure to sound off down in the comment section below and let me know your thoughts on the review. As always, I thank you all so much for watching, and until my next video, I'll see you then. Thanks for watching.